This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Andy Mayhem Show, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, a video producer here with the uh, few wrestling promotions and IndieWrestling.us. This is a show where we talk about people, talk with people from Indie Wrestling and around Indie Wrestling about the stories, how they got into it, and just kind of being fans of this activity. Yes, it's an activity. <laughs> this physical activity, this sporting activity uh, that is professional wrestling. Please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and YouTube page. Uh, you can also follow us at Mayhem Show on the Twitter, 412-206-WMS0, or Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com if you'd like to join us and uh, let us know any questions for people coming up. Or if you have any uh, recommendations who we should have on the show, please hit us up. We consider all options here uh, and uh, look into them for, for everybody. A lot of people from this year were recommendations, and it's really cool to see. Are you sighing already over there? No. You know, <laughs> it's been a long day. No, it's no, been no, a I'm long sorry. day. Yeah, we're apologize. recovering from the Mayhem show. I don't know where the switcher <laughs> is. Hold on, hold on. It's not your turn yet. <laughs> But please check out everything and, of course, events and seeing who's coming up on our our, uh, guesting on the couch or remotely here over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page where the stream pops up a good bit and sometimes randomly, sometimes at weird times of the day. And you can get get in on a, a good interview live as it happens. But as you heard... We got a special guest with us here this week. Somebody who has not been on the he's been on the Wrestling Mayhem show ages ago, long time ago, in a basement far, far blocks away. Um, and he's back with us. And so we had just had a great time on the Wrestling Mayhem show. But welcome to the Indie Mayhem show, Super Hentai. There you go. There, what? What? Uh, uh, there, you go. there you go. We have a little bit of movement Sweet. in between shows. Right. And we got perfect <laughs> positioning of Shawn Michaels crotch in the Beautiful. background, yeah. which is so appropriate for this. You can't go wrong with Thank that. Thank you for joining us, Super Hentai. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So, uh, I, and I know we've, we've talked about, we've interviewed you way back in the day, but there's a lot of new, uh, uh, new eyes on this right now uh, from then. And uh, so, we're just going to start from scratch with you here. Your long sorted story uh but <laughs> <laughs> but first of all uh what is your kind of earliest memory of uh pro wrestling um oh gosh i if i was to put an age on it say five or six years old mm-hmm. uh, i remember uh being at my grandmother's house um my older sister was in the wrestling at the time and i just remember seeing uh one of the shows were on so this was back in the early 80s yes i'm that old uh and I remember seeing Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. He was going to be one of the wrestlers that were coming up next after the commercial break. Uh, I don't remember the match exactly, but I know I stuck around for the whole show. I was hooked right then and there. You know, that's 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 it. That was all she wrote. So. I miss. Was this WWE or NWA days? This is uh, WWF. WWF? At the time. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know WWE. WWF. Yeah. <laughs> we all. If you're. Man, we're getting to that age where it's like, if you're like, I remember WWF, yeah, you know, <laughs> and some d- really don't. Um, but anyways, so what, what was kind of like the connection from that? And obviously, you're probably a fan for a while through through growing up to deciding, hey, I think I can get into the ring. Uh, well, you know, I always saw it as something uh, I wish I could do in the 80s, but the guys were just they were just enormous. They were big. I'm not that, you know, I'm not a big guy. I'm 5'5", five, five right now, 190. I'm not that big. And that's, you know, back then I was a little kid, just a runt. And I'm thinking, well, God, that would be something awesome to do. I wish I could be big enough to do it. Then uh, late 80s, early 90s, uh, WCW had that um, that lethal lottery. And that's when I was introduced to, like, Juice and Liger. And he was smaller than a lot of the other, thick, but smaller than a lot of the other U.S. wrestlers. And I'm like, man... I didn't know Japanese wrestling was so different, you know, and that I sort of got turned on to their early nineties. I got introduced to Japanese wrestling full blown. I saw uh, Hayabusa 
I saw a great Sasuke. Those are the two guys that stood out and pretty much two of my idols. And that, those are the guys that I'm like, I think I can do this. I, I think I could actually make this not a career, but just at least get in there and give it, give it my all, give it, give it a shot. Interesting. So you like, and then that's that we had to have such a limited exposure to those. Cause you know, say WCW, they're like, I never saw guys like that coming up in WWE. You know, the only or F sorry. <laughs> I'm, I've been retrained by the machine. Uh, you know, after all <laughs> these years, right. Uh, it, it, you know, growing up and that was all I was exposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how, how did you kind of try to follow Japanese wrestling after the kind of discovery again, like that early nineties kind of when there was, there was no internet at that time. Right. Well, I had an older cousin. Mm-hmm. Who would he was a wrestling fanatic, where he sort of like the uh, the underground stuff, stuff that you weren't you weren't getting on TV, you weren't getting WWE, you know WWF, WCW. It was you had to uh, it, you were sort of a underground society of sorts to where you were trading tapes with other guys that had the same interest. And he's the one that actually got me into the uh, Japanese wrestling and the uh, lucha libre. Um, he introduced me to that. And uh, so through him, he would get uh, an assortment of videos, assortment of tapes every month. And uh, I remember just going to his house weekly, and we would just spend uh, hours upon hours watching all these uh, all these matches, trying to get introduced to these guys, trying to th- figure out who you know, just just where everyone stood in the pecking order and what organizations were what and everything else. And so. Uh, once I got introduced into the, like I said, the Japanese and Lucha Libre, I, uh, I just pretty much followed whatever my cousin was getting his inventory of tapes. And that's, that's how, you know, that's the best we could follow it for a good while. So tape trading the precursor to YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. That's awesome. And then, so how did you kind of discover like how to get trained? Well, um, there was a local organization, probably, I want to say it was about 96, mm-hmm. 97, 96 ish. I got introduced to a local promotion. Uh, back then there was, I think there were three organizations in the area. Um, uh, maybe four, but I, I remember going to a show and I was getting introduced to all these guys. It was, it was PWX actually. So I went to see, and I just remember, I mean, the place was packed and, getting to see all these wrestlers coming out and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I I went with my cousin again, he's the one that discovered it. So we went and I said to him, I said, man, I I wonder if they have a training school, blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, months went by, I, I I inquired about their training school, but I didn't, I didn't proceed. Didn't, didn't pursue that. Um, I ended up getting hooked up with, uh, about a year later with, uh, Shirley Doe. Um, he was training guys out of Penn Hills. And, uh, so I, I, I ended up connecting with him and it was me. And, uh, there was a bunch of guys in his school, which he, I, that was his first training school. He wasn't training. He didn't have a training school. It wasn't Shirley Doe's training school. It was, he's going to give us a go. It didn't even have a name at the time, but he had, if I was to put a number to it, he probably had about 15 or 20 guys that wanted to do this. Wow. Uh, whittled it down and ended up being uh, down to me and Devil Budokan were the last two. Um, but he he was training us, and that's that's pretty much how I got introduced to try to figure out how to get into this as a uh, you know as to try to get trained locally. And he was he was the guy he was he was my savior, I guess you could call it. And I still go <laughs> to him today for uh, mentorship and whatnot. I mean, he's a huge influence. His mind is amazing, and he was mm-hmm. very very patient. Um, and he had to be even back then. Cause I mean, he was, he was, uh, he was traveling a ton mm-hmm. for, for wrestling on his own. You know, he was establishing himself. Cause I, if I'm not mistaken, I think he started in 95 was his debut. So he was only about two years, maybe three years in at the time. And so he was, he was a very busy guy. And for him to put that time aside for us, a bunch of guys, he didn't even know that that meant a lot to me and still holds a, a ton of weight to me to this day that he put you know he invested that time so and, and surely though if, if you guys want to kind of learn a little bit about about him uh, a few episodes right here on the indie mayhem show we did have him in here and had a great long discussion with him about 
you know, kind of coming up wrestling in the in the mid '90s and through that era and everything like that. And and I think we did talk a little bit about training as well. So I do want to get to that with you as well. But in the meantime, um, you, and you've had an interesting path from then. Like you know, I know we we last time we had you on the show again ages ago. <laughs> uh, you know, you really, you know, you were on that 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 Japanese path, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you're still you're still announced as trained. You know, your location is trained in Hayabusa, Japan. <laughs> yeah. Like still to this day, right? Uh, <laughs> which I remember, you know, 2006 when I, I started discovering indie wrestling in the area. You know, they're just like, wow, this guy went to Japan. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and, and it still sounds. It's still it's still amazing. And you you did you spent time in Japan. You trained over there. We had a good discussion about that. I think we had a discussion in previous uh, uh, with Marshall Gambino from when they went over. And everybody we know that goes over, you know, is just like that is a completely different world over there, especially on that training side, right? Can you talk a little bit about how that came about and your experience over there? Yeah. Um, so uh, among the, um, the the tape trading industry, it sounds it sounds so under it sounds so dark. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. The, the, you know, it, the, just. With the wrestling tapes, with this trading, um, Shirley Doe actually was trading with um, a, a gentleman over in Japan who he befriended. Uh, the guy, we didn't know how much weight he actually held with, uh, you know, indie promotions over in Japan. Um, and uh, he inquired about some guys here that he saw in IWC. Um, and I was actually one of them. And Shirley Doe actually said, hey, listen. Uh, here's the backstory on super hentai, blah, blah, blah. That name actually stood out to him, obviously. Um, and so I actually got the invite to go over. That's how I got my first tour over there, uh, was actually through that gentleman. And he knew, um, he knew the guys that wrestled, uh, that wrestled for WMF, which was Hayabusa's group, uh, wrestling's marvelous future. It was called. (laughs) So (laughs) I, (laughs) which which again, that probably sounds cooler in Japanese, right? right? Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, that, that happens a lot when you look at animes and everything. That's my experience with Japanese culture is just like it's blah, blah, blah. Like it just sounds like this weird, uh, obvious title or odd title. And you're just right. like, no, they, like that that fits though. <laughs> like it's, it's kind of like the cultural thing, right? Exactly, exactly. Spot on. So, uh, you know, I went over there. Uh, I was in the agreement of um, I was going to be in the dojo living there training there two weeks uh we trained from 10 in the morning till 4 p.m uh monday through saturday uh there were three shows that i did over the course of that two weeks Mm -hmm. um so we did the three shows and the shows were uh you know they weren't close they where we were i was staying two hours south of tokyo well these shows they provided the bus for us but these shows were anywhere from four to five hours away you know, they weren't, they weren't close shows. They weren't an hour away. They weren't 15 minutes away. It was nothing like that. Um, you set up the ring, mm-hmm. uh, everything. And then you tore down accordingly. And that was everybody on the roster. Nobody, everybody was, was, it was pitching no matter, in. No matter where they were on the car. Did not was matter. Part of it. Did not matter. There were guys on there that were seven, eight years in, they were still doing it. They didn't have to, but they still did. Um, but yeah, that was, it was a lot of training and it, it, it was a humbling experience. You know, the, our, our warm ups were, they call them Hindu squats, body squats. You don't use weight. We were doing a thousand of them every day to start training. And that was warm ups. And our cool downs were 500, 500 of those, the cool down. Um, it was just brutal, but I learned so much, so much. And it was, it was a fantastic experience. And, um, I wish, I wish every guy could, could experience that. To let them know where they're actually at in the pecking order mm-hmm. of, of, hey, you got a long way to go in terms of where you're at right now. So, but um, yeah, that's how that, that came about. So I was there for two weeks back in 2002. I returned in 2004 just for four days and uh, it, it was fantastic. It was a great experience. Mm-hmm. And then, so uh, we, we, we kind of talked, we were talking about a little bit before uh, we, we were starting doing the shows tonight and you were talking about kind of your kind of career goals and how, you know, some of the opportunities you had and, and even opportunities that were offered to you, mm-hmm. you know, that, that you didn't take, but you know, kind of how that still was, you really did kind of achieve your, uh, uh career goals, no matter what happens. 
Correct. Yeah. I, uh, you know, my goal was to get over there. I wanted to wrestle for Japan. That was mm -hmm. my main goal. And I was, you know, when a guy, a wrestler gets, uh, they get laser focused on something, they're hell bent. They can sort of lose focus on the fun of wrestling because they, you know, and then they develop, they, you know, guys can get, get grumpy or get, you know, they can be a bit of a dick because they are just so focused. They're so stressed out on making it to a certain point that they, they, like I said, they lose focus of the, of the whole, the big picture of wrestling. Well, um, you know, I was one of them guys when it came to Japan, I wanted to get there. I got there during that tour. I, uh, I, I had an opportunity to, um, to work for Michinoku pro. They, um, they were going to offer me, um, you know, uh, offer me to wrestle six months out of the year there. It would be every other month. When I was there, I would wrestle every single day and they would pay me handsomely. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the pay was going to be, uh, too good to be true almost. Right. Um, and, and so I, I had suffered a, a pretty significant injury in training and it was lingering big time still, you know, it's still early in my career. It was lingering big time. And I'm a realist. I don't, I'm not one of these guys that, that think, Oh, well I got this. Everything will be okay. I'll work it out. It was like, well, that plane ride alone is 12 hours. And I was hurting after that, that one plane ride. So I, I said to myself, well, if I can get them to give me a contract for what, what this agreement is, now I'm going to do it. And, uh, due to whatever circumstances, they don't provide contracts, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't offer contracts, at least the smaller places. So I had to graciously decline. Um, and to this day, I still wonder, oh man, maybe I should have gave it a shot. I lived at home. I didn't, <laughs> I had a lot less, uh, financial burden or, or responsibilities rather. I'm like, man, maybe, maybe I should have gave it a shot, but I got there and just knowing that they thought that I had potential enough to, to, to invest in me, mm -hmm. um, was just that that meant the world to me. And I was for Sasuke, you know, that was, I, I mean, I would just be in the same locker room as him. I couldn't imagine how much I would have learned from him in Taka and whatever, but man, that just, it's just nice to know. It's, it's nice to know that the opportunity was there. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. That's awesome. And, 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 you know, of course you, you came back, you did, you know, I was introduced, introduced to you in IWC, uh, classically, I think the second show I ever saw, uh, was pro maybe third. It was the November pain where it was one of the most brutal things I've ever seen in a oh, ladder dear. match. Oh God. That's, <laughs> that is my, my first impression of like, holy shit. This super hentai guy <laughs> is you and balls hot Troy Lords. <laughs> And, and the most brutal ladder match was the first time that I've seen a ladder match that did not involve something hanging from the ring, uh, from above the ring. Uh, and apparently nobody cared. <laughs> yeah, that's what we, it's funny you mentioned that. Troy and I had said, listen, we got nothing. What the hell are we doing a ladder match for? If we, what the hell's hanging off the... Yeah, What's yeah, hanging yeah. off the raptor? Nothing. Yeah, I go, yeah. what the hell are we have a ladder in this match for? I said, I don't want, I don't want that in a match. That's, those things hurt. <laughs> they hurt like all oh, get out. So I'm like, ah, man, I'm like... Okay, so let's try to structure this to where it doesn't mean dick if we're using if this is a ladder match. Let's just go right, on right, right, and do right. shit that we're going to regret. And so we did, <laughs> and I'm glad that you remembered that, and it was such a lasting impression. Still so. to this day. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you you had a you know again a long career between like IWC and things in the area, and and we've talked about a bit on Wrestling Mayhem Show how it just seems like everybody came through, especially around those mid two thousands. Uh, with IWC, I mean, guys like CM Punk, guys like AJ Styles, um, now Corey Graves uh, was coming up through there at the time. Uh, uh, you know, eventually guys like Logan Chulo uh, that became Elias um, and, and apparently a damn good singer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we have established there's no singing course in the IWC training school uh, when you were there, at least. Maybe these days. Who knows? There seems to be a lot of entertainment coming out of there. But anyways, uh, what was it like that that kind of, you know, you wrestled a lot of these guys that, that you saw, we, we've seen blow up, you know, and it's great to see kind of the guys that have, you know, we've seen, you know, we're talking about Cesaro a little bit uh, off our last show and everything like that. What was kind of the atmosphere around this promotion at the time? It was, uh, everybody was pretty positive, mm -hmm. you know, cause a lot of those guys would see each other in other promotions. So you sort of, it was sort of like a traveling circus. Everybody was sort of traveling <laughs> together, which seems appropriate. Right. Exactly. 
and uh, you know, it's uh, like Doe and I would see these guys. We were first introduced to um, Punk and Cabana uh, in IWA Mid South. Mm -hmm. That's where we first met them. Was out there, and then we saw them in Philadelphia, and uh, we told Norm, "Hey, you might want to bring these guys in." So we would try to bring in. You know, we would try to make suggestions of him maybe bringing in these guys that are look like they're sort of they're up and comers, man. Let's mm -hmm. get them in here. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, the atmosphere it, being in, I was in other locker rooms with those guys, but IWC at that time it was a very relaxed and fun locker room to be in. A lot of us got along. I'm not going to say everybody because mm -hmm. that's the nature of the game. It's just too many personalities to have everybody get along, but. Uh, it sure as heck felt like it. Mm -hmm. Everyone could talk to everyone. We could get suggestions. We could ask guys, hey, could you watch my match? Uh, let me know what you think about it. Let me know this, that, and the other. And, and you know, everyone would sort of, um, if they had time, they, they would give a minute. They, they just check out at least a part of it, not, you know, not the whole mm -hmm. thing. But mm -hmm. it was, you learned a lot, you know, a, a lot from each other. And, and um, you know, you could go up, to, like I say, you could go up to anybody and anyone at any given time, if they had, had a moment, they would give advice or, or whatever. And, and it was, a, it was a really fun locker room to be in. It didn't feel like that there were, uh, you know, too many egos in there at the time. Definitely. And, and of course, you know, you kind of transitioned into being part of the, the, the training school with them. We talked about, uh, people like Britt Baker, who's now, you know, making the news, uh, being a part of this, uh, uh, uh Anthony Bourdain thing coming up. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, how did you get into training and, and, and some of the, some of the people that came out of that? Um, yeah, well, I, uh, well, Shirley Doe, uh, Norm Connors had asked Shirley Doe to be the trainer. It was the, um, uh, the trainer for the IWC school back in the early two thousands. And, um, he said, pick, pick an, a, an assistant trainer, so to speak. So, uh, Shirley picked me. He asked me if I would do it. Listen, that's my trainer. I mean, I, I go to him for everything. I saw that I go to him for a ton of advice. So he feels that I could help him, you know, train guys. I mean, yeah, I'm jumping right on this. That's, that's a, that's an honor to be asked. So I got into it with him and, uh, we had a number of students come through. We, we both trained, uh, you know, guys like, um, Mickey and Marshall Gambino, Jason Gorey, Facade, see my eye on uh, a lot of guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy DeMarco. Uh, we we trained a lot of those guys early, uh, you know, early in the training schools um, start, and then uh, Shirley parted ways with uh, with IWC, and there wasn't a school. The school was dormant for a bit, and then uh, Chuck. Well, let me see. Was it Norm or Chuck? God, the years run together. You know what? I want to say it's Chuck. Chuck mm -hmm. Roberts took over for Norm, and he wanted to start the school back up. So he asked me to pick a trainee or someone to, to train with me, and I picked uh, Marshall Gambino. And him and I trained. Um, for the most part, there was a lull that we didn't train, like a, a school or a class we didn't train. But for the most part, it was Marshall and myself mm -hmm. that trained. I believe at the time, uh, 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 Shima, DJZ, was, was probably training a, another class at he the same trained, time, Yeah, right? he trained a class, and Justin Ido actually trained a class as well. Justin mm -hmm. trained a, a few classes. Um, it was a nice rotation because mm -hmm. you didn't get burned out, and it worked out well. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got into being a trainer. It also seemed interesting because it seemed like you could tell you, – you could almost tell like, oh, that's one of Shima's guys. That's one of Hentai's guys. <laughs> well, like the style. Like when, right. when the rednecks were doing moonsaults, I'm like, oh, that's Shima's class. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, but anyways uh, – <laughs> Uh, but, but, but yeah, yeah. So, so like, you know, that transition into like, and I imagine you brought a little bit of that kind of Japanese training style with it, right? Most definitely. When I actually returned, uh, when I actually returned from Japan off that first, that 2002 stint, I, I brought back a bunch of, uh, drills that we were doing there. I said, Shirley, you got to check these out, man. I do think these would be good enough to, you know, use here. He goes, we're going to, we're going to make it work. So, uh, we adapted that into the style or into mm -hmm. the training and we just went from there and uh, even up to Brittany's class, we were still using that same, you know, discipline mm -hmm. to, to train those guys. Um, and it works. It worked. It worked out really well. You really get to wean out the the people that were uh, were just there because they saw it on TV as opposed to people that were there because they have been watching it. They have a passion for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, that's. 
that's that was definitely a, a an attribute to bring to bring that kind of uh, training development to IWC. So, mm-hmm. and if I were to ever train again, I would go. I would go right back to it. You know, I wouldn't. Why fix something that's not broke? Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely. Um, I want to kind of roll back a little bit to your origins uh, for a second here, um, because obviously you're one of the few. I'm saying you're good, one of the few consistently masked wrestlers I know in <laughs> indie wrestling, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, you know, between uh, being a masked guy and and the name, which definitely raises eyebrows, especially with Facebook's uh, names policy. Uh, <laughs> can you tell me about the de- development and decision of being a, being a masked wrestler and and picking the name Super Hentai? <laughs> um, yeah. Well, uh, like I said in the early '90s, when I saw the the Japanese wrestling. Um, I, I I just fell in love with Hayabusa and, and Sasuke were the two guys. They were my guys. Mm-hmm. And I just fell in love with that look. I loved that look. Um, and I just said, man, that's that's what I want to do. That's that's what I want to mirror myself after, a masked wrestler. Excuse me, wrestler. And um, I, I just... I, I feel when you get into wrestling... Again, that realism. You need to know, you need to understand where you're going to be on the pe- in the pecking order. So a masked wrestler, listen, unless I'm in Japan, unless I'm in Mexico, we're not, I'm not a main eventer. Mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not chasing a heavyweight title. I could chase any other title on the roster, but not that one. Mm-hmm. And I understand that I'm primarily a mid-carder. That's mm-hmm. fine. That works. Um, and so, uh, you know, I said, okay. My style, I love that high flying style. Back then, it really wasn't around outside of the, you know the Guerreros and stuff from the mid '90s and whatever. So, I said I started adapting what I wanted, and the name I didn't have a name. I didn't have a name, and I I didn't know what to come up. I had no clue. I had nothing. Uh, Shirley Doe, and actually one of his room, <laughs> one of his roommates, uh, they they came to practice. Uh, the following week when I, when I was getting ready to debut soon and I, I still didn't have a name. Hey, we got a name for you, kid. Oh, all right. What, what is it? My name is Super Hentai. I said, awesome. What what does it mean? I, what does that mean? <laughs> You'll find out in due time. And I'm like, <laughs> what? I, uh, okay. Well, you know, you're so excited. You're so eager. At the time, I was 20 years old. I just didn't care. Just, all right. Okay. I'm going with Again, it. Again, no internet. <laughs> Zero internet. So they're like, listen. There's no, there's no Japanese dictionary at this that's time. That's it. Yeah. They say when you get enough matches under your belt, when you show us that you're you're here to stay, at least you're going to give it an effort, we'll let you know what the name means. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I'm like, I okay. You know, I was very anxious to know, but I'm very disciplined because I did collegiate wrestling uh, all the way up to that point, from 12 to 22 years old. So... You know, you have to have, uh, you listen to your coaches. No different now. You listen to your trainers. Mm-hmm. And so I did not as, uh, it burned a hole in me, but I could not f- figure it out because I know I'd let it slip. Yeah, and then yeah. I would be doing squats until my legs fell off. So I was <laughs> like, no, just wait. And it was about, I want to say it was about four months later that they, uh, I finally got known you know they told me what it meant and i was in my head i'm like oh shit how am i how do you have kids like i'm a good guy they're chanting hentai out there i feel like and an for ass those that are not familiar what does hentai mean <laughs> listen for all intents and pervert for all intents and purposes we'll just say it's pervert pervert and then my <laughs> my mother finally asked me what it you know what it meant because I was went home to her. I said, "Man, here's my name," and she's like, "What does it mean?" And I had to explain everything to her, and then I finally figured out what it was, and I told her, and she goes, "What? What? <laughs> Pervert? <laughs> Pervert? Listen, my mother doesn't swear yeah. or smoke or drink," and uh, she goes, "What? This? Why?" She had all these questions. She hit me like a, like it was a sixty minute interview. I said, "I don't know. I don't know." I, and I said, "You know what? I'm going to change it." Give me a few months. I'm changing it. It's yeah. just as soon as I figure out something. And 19 years later, it's still <laughs> still anti. So so, and, and I don't think it's done on me when we talked to you before about this. Was there a reaction when you went to Japan where they know what the word is for yes. sure? Yes, it was that. Uh, oh, 
<laughs> it was that was the best. I that was the reaction I wanted, but for maybe a snazzy move or something. I didn't know I was gonna get it for my name. It was fantastic. So uh yeah and it was every all three of those shows and then when i went back and did those two shows again it was every time the reaction oh you mean, like, like, so there was an announcement and you just heard the crowd oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was smoking it was smoking i remember i hit the one guy with a shoulder tackle and i was like hey die and they were like oh and then i heard one guy go hey die like that's what i heard just once some guy in the back air somewhere i was like oh, this is what i came here for this is amazing <laughs> we got matt carlitz is hanging out with us here and he he definitely has some questions after that one <laughs> oh, oh. um pardon my use of uh perhaps terminology i don't know anything about before you got um smartened up to what hentai meant and you're still performing here in the states primarily did you get the sense that perhaps someone in the crowd maybe knew what it meant? And it, would, would you hear people like kind of whispering almost in the crowd behind your back? Like, <laughs> why would he call himself that? Like anything <laughs> like that? Like, <laughs> no, you know what? I didn't hear anyone in the crowd. But in the locker room, I would hear – like guys would snicker. They would <laughs> start laughing. Well, what I didn't know was uh, Shirley Doe knew a ton of these guys. So he smartened them up not to say anything to me when I got in the locker room. He made sure that that was, that was under lock and key. But the guys in the locker room would be laughing. Like I would go up, oh, you're hentai. And they would have that look on their face like, you, you, you <laughs> dumb kid. You, have, you rook. You have no clue what that means. But no one in the crowd, if they did, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. So. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I just. Um... Like is it is this is this a point of pride for you now today? Like it, it's such a wrestling thing. Like I, you know what I, you know it's like, hey, I made this work, so rookie, you can make this work. You know? Is yeah, like right, right, right. I um, yeah, you know what I, 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 I don't want to call it a legacy because you know it's indie wrestling, and I don't. It's not like I've made it to the top and made millions. Nineteen or anything. years is like no. Yeah, the longevity part is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And you know what? It's pretty unique because there's guys that from years ago, uh, one of my trainees would mention, yeah, I was trained by Super Hentai. Hentai, he's still around. Man, I didn't know he was yeah, still around. Yeah. They remember. That's not an A. It's not a, you know, Chad Smith or whatever, hot dog <laughs> fucking <laughs> Eric, the Tarek, great, whatever the fuck. Like people. <laughs> People remember Super Hentai. Yeah. And you know what? It worked really well in the Attitude Era because I was able to hump guys' faces and shit like that. Like, I was able to just get out of control. Yeah. 2000, you know, the problem I'm finding now is, you know, anti everything, which means don't go rubbing your crotch in some dude's head. And it's that's been an issue for the last five to six years. So now I just got this Super Hentai name and it's, I can't sort of build on like i had to strip all that down um you, you can't yeah. pay it off anymore it's you, exactly you're giving them the promise of perversion and then yes. you're not delivering and it's and i'm not delivering Ugh. and i feel like and that's you know i i i started using the moniker masked aggression mm -hmm. which is what my instagram account is and my shirts you know they say masked aggression on because i'm trying to give something else for the crowd to sort of latch on to, you know, like Hunter Hearst Helmsley would eventually, you know, evolve in the triple H. So I don't know if I'll be around long enough to evolve in the mass aggression itself, but mm. they have something else they can chant. <laughs> if I'm a good guy <laughs> to where it's not hentai and which I feel like hentai is known a lot more now than it was mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. And like I said, like you said, the payoff isn't there. Even we're even we're talking about finding an image for you on Google Images. It's like three are you, and then the, <laughs> the rest are something you just don't want to get into. Exactly, and I don't <laughs> want that. I remember one time these kids came up with their parents, and they might have been ten. I mm -hmm. don't know. At the time, I had and this is how old it was. Uh, VHS. <laughs> I was selling VHS tapes. Yep. And the mother comes up and says, "Hey, my boys. So, um, how much are your tapes?" I'm like, "Oh, they're only eight bucks." 
eight bucks. My boy saw them on the internet for like 20. I'm like, they're not the right ones. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, they are not the right ones and you need to get some sort of parental code on your, your computer. Yeah. I don't know what you need, but they aren't looking at the right ones. It's and I'm like, like, man. And for me, my experience was like, I went to the video store and there's the anime section and we just picked up a couple of random ones and one happened to be like La Blue Girl. And if you look up La Blue Girl today, <laughs> You, you'll you'll see the one you're warned uh nsfw uh and and that is what's in my head when i'm like here somebody announced super hentai like what the fuck is gonna come out through that curtain right now right so and 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 tachi was the one with me at the first iwc show and like we're both like it was he was with me when we were just like oh, God, what anime is and that's what we found <laughs> and that was a joke for years for us right and then like the walking epitome of our joke just walked through a wrestling show <laughs> after that it was just it was it was amazing and then we find your myspace page and there's a giant condom wrapper on it and <laughs> <laughs> I did what I good to sort of intertwine the two. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Wrestling's oh, sure. a perversion in and itself. That's what I figured, especially yeah. back then. So, mm. anyways, uh, you talk about the character. We talked about uh, IWC, of course, and and you're kind of um, um, hitting this other gear with your career. And we t- we talked about this before as well. Um, you know, you're you you moved on to RWA. You're doing some stuff in in Cleveland. Well, I want to talk about RWA. Obviously, a fairly different atmosphere. <laughs> as we kind of got into um i think we talked about that on mayhem show some of your interactions with fans and kids uh <laughs> <laughs> that are just the, yeah uh you know talk about that you you like i remember talking to you after a show and you know when you were like really letting it loose and you're just like i love this shit i miss yeah. this shit uh, uh, uh going into it. Talk, talk about that like kind of going into that new 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 locker room and sure. show and crowd and holy shit sure yeah yeah so uh you know coming out of iwc you're you're pretty much you're gonna mind your business or your uh your language you're not gonna get yeah for the most part yeah you're not gonna swear uh the vulgarities aren't gonna be unless i would unless you're jimmy vegas well then you know who's gonna tell him to stop (laughs) exactly i mean honestly that's a big guy big guy big intimidating yeah and maybe i instigate that maybe i try to egg them all when i was there Perhaps. I'm just saying perhaps. But, uh, you know, you could use the clean swear words at IWC, but people really try to not use them too much. You know, we understood everyone was on the unwritten rule of how the crowd is. So, okay. with that being said, and now, mind you, I'm coming out of there as a face going to RWA uh, again. I'm going to be a heel going as a heel. I asked the promoter, okay, Dr. Feelbad. What are your limits? You got it. I feel as a professional, you should always ask what the limits are. How far can we go? How far do you want us to go? You do not want to get out of hand or say something, get out of line. And then it creates a huge headache for the promoter. And who knows what else is going to happen? Uh, social media, everyone's got it, got a voice now and, uh, they can, they can make things hell for you mm-hmm. under certain circumstances. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, okay, he says, you can do whatever you want. And I'm thinking, uh, I go, wait, anything? He goes, listen, I don't give a shit what you say. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm going to gauge this crowd anyway. It's my first time out there. And I go out there, uh, and and <laughs> I go out there, and I'm, I'm getting the booze. I'm, I'm getting them to react. And this eight-year-old, this eight-year-old kid tells me to suck their dick. Suck my dick, Super Hentai. <laughs> you fucking suck. That's <laughs> what he said. You know, I was trying not to swear on a side note. I was trying. I was telling Sorg. I was telling man. I was trying not to swear so much coming back because I was so out of control last time I was here. But I'm just quoting. This is verbatim. <laughs> so I want that to be known. I only swore, I think, three times out of my own admission. It was the last story. But listen, yeah. That kid told me that, and I said, "Oh, well, that's it. I'm we, hell with this. It's on." So <laughs> I told him that his that mom, little that little kid set the tone for you. Yeah. So I said some <laughs> choice words to his mom, <laughs> and that was it. And I just went to town, and I just started doing the jerking off motion again. And I'm like, "Man, this is like it's 2002. I love this. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go." Only now I can swear. This is this is absolutely absurd. 
for everyone sitting out there because I just started going off. I just targeted everybody, everybody, and I just still couldn't believe. I remember that that's what I, I remember could do now. There. I remember now exactly what you told me after one of those first shows. Where it was like, like I just want to jack off all over the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> God. Yeah, I did. I did want to. I still do. I still want to just hose them all down. Just hose them down. I just want to eat, eat a just a fucking whole cow and just let that protein just sit and just drag my balls behind me like a wedding train. And then I'm just going to hose them down. Hell with it. So you're saying you're having fun these days. I'm having a blast. <laughs> yes. I'm having a blast. I'm representing well right now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Come I know. to RWA <laughs> this weekend, this Saturday. Yeah. You know. You, you might get a show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bring a raincoat like you're going to a Gallagher show. It's like... <laughs> I just like... I just want to say, I, I've been to RWA many times. I've been to RWA a few times. This is the kind of wrestling show you go to where, like, the parents bring their, like, newborn children in the baby carriers <laughs> with them to yeah. the show. Oh, yeah. Right? This, this shit Ring happens side. Ring at side. RWA. Yeah. And people don't even bat an eye. No. And meanwhile, nothing. you got this going on. All right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you've never seen more little kids, you know, kids, families, you know, th- that whole vibe. But, like, it is just, like, it is, it's so raw and it's, I mean, it's beautiful. Like, I, I really... <laughs> I'm a big believer. Like everyone needs to see, experience all the Pittsburgh area indies mm-hmm. at least once or twice, because <laughs> they are all just a, a little slice of a larger pie, and it's it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> RWA is is a magic all its own, and it's it's fantastic. I'm glad so. that you've got to witness it, and I'm glad that we have a witness here outside <laughs> of us that is that can attest to this. So that's that's great. That's great. That's amazing. But uh, yeah. So uh, and I see you're also because I I don't you know I don't remember you traveling much in in, in my knowing you outside of Pittsburgh, but you're going to Cleveland these days too. Yeah, I started wrestling for Maximum Assault Wrestling uh, up there in Cleveland, and I'm I'm making connections. You know, it's it's weird how wrestling works, or I think any sport. If you're in it long enough, you you're you have all this fire. And then you hit a point to where you start questioning, oh damn, have I been in this too long? Or mm. should I maybe just call it a call it a day or whatever? And then you start getting that second win of like, you know what? I think I'm I know I'm on my way out. I'm in my twilight, so to speak. Let me I'm I'm going out. I, I'm kicking it back into I'm gonna put it into one more gear. I'm just gonna see. And then if I can go, I'm gonna go another gear out after that. And just mm. go just see what I can do. I'm 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 doing this year to year. And right now I'm back in that mode of let me get a, a booking outside of here, outside of Pittsburgh. Hmm. That's that's the MAW. And uh I was just there this past Saturday and I made a connection of possibly getting another another booking under my belt out in Toledo. And you know, it's like, oh man. It's it, it feels good to get these again, and you know my I uh, I may or may not have a significant other at home. I try to keep my <laughs> personal life separate uh, from uh, this uh, life. Maybe a Mrs. Hentai, possibly, you know. But if I do, the support is there. You know, it's it's there's no friction with that. So there's the only person that's telling me no is is me. You know, that mm-hmm. to say to, to pull back. But yeah, I'm, I'm starting to travel again, and it's great. I'm just trying to make it to where it's not too far from home. You know, mm-hmm. Cleveland's not that far. Toledo's not that far. If I can keep it to about a three hour radius, you know, somewhere of that nature, I'm fine with it. I, I got, I, and it's fun. It's great. You know, I'm I'm a face up there. Mm-hmm. The crowd's cheering me and stuff, and it's cool as hell. <laughs> but then I'm like, <laughs> shit, I got to do a dive now because this is like a lucha <laughs> crowd. Damn it! Now I got to leave my feet. <laughs> like oh but it's a blast it's a blast how how are you how, how's your body how how are you physically like are are, are you um and, and was that a part of the reason that you kind of like uh um we're, we're thinking that maybe you were coming towards the end there a little bit like, yeah like where are you at, at this point yeah um well when i started pulling back on my bookings years ago i had uh again i'm i'm gonna blur the lines between personal and in and, and business but I, I actually went back to school and I had to make a big decision of, mm-hmm. uh, man, I got to scale back these bookings that I have out of town because it's just cutting into too much time of, of school. So I kept the local ones, which is the time was IWC. When I got out, um, you know, I just sort of was 
I, I was I was comfortable where I was. And then um, you know, then I got I got an injury, um, a pretty substantial one. And uh I didn't get surgery on it. You know, I'm still going and I'm okay. And you know what? I'm not the only one. If any guy any guy can tell you war stories that they're banged up, but uh for me personally, yeah, I I, ha- I got myself a pretty decent injury and I already had a decent a nagging injury from training way back in 97 is when I started my training. So, you know, now I had to tackle two. Um, but I had a buddy tell me, he's like, you know what? You've been very fortunate that you've only had these two injuries, these two big injuries. He goes, look at all the guys that had to quit or have had multiple surgeries on elbows or knees or ankles. And concussions. And concussions. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I started to think, that's when I started thinking to myself, man, maybe I should slow down. But I went through therapy. And the therapist, you know, it's nice. It, so many people self-diagnose. <laughs> hey, I'm better. F it. Let's go. Let's go. I'm driving to Kentucky. And, you know, then they end up off, you know, calling triple A to get their car somewhere in Columbus because they can't drive anymore because their leg fell off, you know, because they're an idiot. Cause, yeah. But I went and I got therapy and the therapist said, you, your range of motion actually is a lot better than it was before you got in here. Um, unless you're hurting from the time you get up, to the time you get to bed, don't go under the knife. And that was for this particular injury. So I have stuck with the therapy that he's given me. Hmm. Um, this is going on two and a half years now. And, and this and is not DDP yoga. This is not DDP <laughs> yoga. <laughs> no. I hear it does wonders. <laughs> I hear it too. I know. I'm still trying. I'm thinking if I want to do a downward dog, I'm going to go to there DDP you go. yoga. There you go. Till then, I'm gonna just. I'm just gonna. Okay, put that Zach on the show. Allen loves it. Yeah. I'm just saying, Chris I know. And it, they, the results are with them. They, yeah, they're yeah, proven yeah. results. Oh, geez, yeah, Zach's in the best, <laughs> the best shape of his life. Yeah, he looks great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's like that's my reasoning. And and now I'm getting more confident that I can keep going mm-hmm. with this injury. So again, I, I just take great care in it. I pulled a lot of moves out of my repertoire. Uh, there's certain things that I won't do uh, just because of a wrong pivot or, or whatever. Uh, that could be the, you know, that could, that could be the end there. But um, yeah, I just learned to adapt and, 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 and still, it. you know, having great matches with guys like, like Sanjay, I know we're seeing in RWA, I saw Dutt. that, um, um, you know, on that level with, with things like that. Uh, I think, I think you probably mixed up with Gory here a couple of times mm-hmm. this, this go around too. Always great to see that. Um, so like, like it's still like, you know, it's not noticeable. Thank <laughs> you. you. Know, Good. That, yeah. I always told a promoter, if it ever looks like I'm slowing down mm-hmm. or I'm a detriment to your roster in any way, just let me know. And then let's just go ahead and, and let's, work the storyline, finish out whatever angle I'm in. And then I'll, I'll, I'll leave. I'll graciously bow out and that's it. I, I, too many guys think of themselves rather than themselves within the company. How can they make the company stronger? How can, how can my abilities, me with this character, make this work, make, try to get more people in, in, in the seats and whatnot, you know? And so I don't want to be that guy that's hanging on that you're sitting there in the crowd you're sitting there in the crowd, match four, you hear my music, and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, I liked him, but damn, he is just lost. Yeah, yeah. He's lost it. Like, I'll show you some old stuff of this guy. You know what I mean? I don't want to be yeah. that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, you know, that, that's that's where I'm at with that. It, it's just, it, it's it's such a, um, it, it, it's the natural evolution, it seems like, for any professional wrestler is that, like, with experience, you know, you get smarter and smarter and you learn all these different things, but at the same time you physically, you know, it's just the way it is, right. you know, you know, there's less and less you can do. And then somewhere in between there, the, you know, the two elevators, so to speak, meet up and you become like, you know, your prime and then, right. you know, and then it <laughs> comes into a thing. And, but I mean, as long as you still have, you know, the experience and the knowledge mm-hmm. to go with you it can make up for so much that maybe you would choose not to do physically anymore. Right. And that's, uh, you know, that's, what's great about that RWA crowd is they're, they react if you acknowledge them they react so you can work you can work the the older kind of psychology with them they're going to eat it up they love storyline which is what wrestling should be yeah there's a time and a place for the fancy moves and your rotations you know at 820s or whatever they're making up these days but save it for when it really counts if you have an opportunity to tell the story with uh, not so much minimum amount of moves, but safer moves. Mm-hmm. And the crowd, you're getting that same 
reaction, that same pop as these guys that are doing the dives, jumping off of ladders and stuff in every one of their matches, then why don't you go that route? Save your body for when you need it, for if you need to do that. You know, Sanjay loves working for RWA. He loves them fans, and that's one of the reasons, too. He says you could tell a great story there, and you don't need to kill yourself to, 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 to make that happen. Mm-hmm. So Definitely. What's the, um, what's the craziest flippy thing you've ever done? <laughs> I've okay. and I apologize if there's something I should already know about because I'm not super well versed. No, no, no. I'll tell you what. I don't do no more than one rotation. So you know, <laughs> uh, moon salt, uh, uh, summer salt. Those are my big. Fl- it's how high I've done them off of. Yeah. I have. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. no. 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 Yeah. He's he's right. Um. So my biggest one, my rookie year. The guy that I broke into the business with, we wrestled in Columbus, Ohio. In, or no, no, it was Columbus, Ohio. It was on, is that where Ohio State is? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Forgive me. Jesus. Talk about a dude that sucks. It's like, uh, that's a dude and he doesn't know like where Ohio State <laughs> University is. That dude sucks. Is he wearing panties? What's wrong with that dude? I, we've been through Columbus and even like me, like the first time I was surprised. I was like, hey, Ohio State. Yeah. Oh, it's right here. You know? <laughs> okay. Good. I don't feel as bad yeah, now. That's right. I think we were going through, we we're going to the Arnold too. So yeah, we we're going that way. <laughs> like to the most dude thing. And we're like, there's us. Uh, <laughs> so we, there was a, a wrestling promotion. Uh, they were running a show out of a dance club. Hmm. The dance club, the f- dance floor was sunk in, and there was a balcony. And I said, "The devil boot." Wait, well, this was a Newport musical, was it? I don't know. Wait. I don't know what the name was. That it might have been. Sounds like it. Yeah, I've been there once. Was that about the balcony? Is about twenty five foot. Sounds like. I jumped out of that. I gave him a big high cross body. I went high. <laughs> that was Ricky Steamboat. High cross body. I sprawled out and it hurt so bad. I think that makes sense because I think they've done some JCW out of there too. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, then that's it. I'm pretty yeah, sure that's yeah, probably it. Yeah. So I've done that, but I've done a backflip, a moonsault out of uh, Court Time Sports Center. Mm-hmm. Um, the balcony up there. Oh, my I've, God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've done a moonsault out of there. I've oh, no, no. This has happened at least five times. Yeah. <laughs> Between him and <laughs> Gory and Facade. Yeah. Oh, no. This has happened yeah. a lot there. I've done that and I took a fall away slam. Out of that, Jimmy Vegas gave me a fall away slam one time. Out of the balcony. Out of the balcony. On the, yeah, on the guys hoping I hit someone, <laughs> not the <laughs> floor. I came out of the scissor lift, too. That was the last big dive I did there. I jumped out of the. He drove the scissor that. lift to the ring and yep. lifted it up. I jumped yeah, out of just it. Just seeing so. Super Anti driving the scissor lift <laughs> through the crowd to the <laughs> ring and jumping on a bunch of guys. <laughs> so I right, got all that hand tie. <laughs> that's it. So just some of the, those are some notables. But. I'm trying to stay away from that stuff now. <laughs> I got worried during that last show when Gory started pushing the scaffolding towards the ring. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was... Uh, so did I. <laughs> um, so, let me just wrap it up here. Uh, what are you watching these days? It, you know, Either whether is there anything on TV you're watching or is there anybody on the indies, anybody that's caught your attention these days? Uh, as far as what I'm watching, I'm trying to follow WWE. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know... Because there's a lot of guys that I've... <laughs> which part? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which which of the many programs? <laughs> the Yeah. Yeah, I should be specific. Yeah. Raw. I'm trying to follow Raw. Mm. Uh, you know, I hang in there as long as I can. And, and you know, um, then, you know, whatever. I tune out. I hate to. I mm-hmm. feel like their roster is so talented right now, but they have some of the most bland writing. Mm-hmm. Not that it's terrible it's just bland i just feel like the direction is lost right now it's a shame because the amount of talent on their roster is absurd absurd mm-hmm. um so i'm watching that i'll i'll catch a sprinkles of smackdown here and there um i like lucha underground i like it i enjoy it uh they got some great guys on that roster doing some really fun stuff and what lucha should look like it too many guys try to emulate lucha on the indies and it looks like total garbage they're doing it way wrong they're not posting properly i was on a show uh last month that maw show see my eye on was in with uh some uh, some guys from chicago that he works out with and they were showing me proper lucha posting and how to do uh you know uh the moves that way i wrestled a mini ray mysterio is his name he used to go by <laughs> octagon cito I wrestled him on that show, and that was my first time I wrestled a, a true luchador, and it was uh, a, a very humbling experience. 
I, I didn't know how to take it. It was amazing. I loved it. Kind of a full circle because since Lucha was something you kind of latched onto early on, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Correct. So, uh, what's, um, I hope you don't mind me asking this question. What do you mean by posting? Posting, uh, so you know, um, so in training, you have to, in order for the guy not to land on their head or whatever, that may be taking a move, every move you're either taking or giving or whatever, there's, they call posting. So, Maybe uh, if I took an arm drag, my arm has to, my hand has to be in a certain place, mm-hmm. or a hip toss, or a slam. Um, but with you know, when you go international, it, the posting is not always going to be the same depending on what you're doing, what the move is. Well, you know, you got a lot more uh, gymnastic type moves in lucha libre, so with that comes a whole new set of downs when it comes to posting for these moves. Too many guys put their hands in the wrong placement and it doesn't give the, the pop of the move isn't executed properly because all of, in your hand placement pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's what posting means. So cool. I hope yeah. you don't mind me asking that question. Oh. I, I know I, I don't, I always feel weird. Like as being a true outsider, you know, even more so than Sorg, obviously <laughs> that, that, that it's, it, that's inappropriate for me to even try to use some of these words sometimes, but it is interesting to me that the process is, is fascinating. I respect uh, the fact that you acknowledge that. And I, I, I appreciate that coming from a wrestler standpoint that you're not trying to be in the in circle, you know, yeah. like these guys have been around it for, for years. So they're familiar with the term. They know what's going on, but you, for you to acknowledge that I, I myself, I personally respect that that fact. I just, I just met him the night. I met him the night. I just met him the night. <laughs> <laughs> and you're teaching wrestling terminology. Teaching yeah, terminology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm it's old a... enough to know. I don't know anything. So, well, welcome to wrestling school with Super Hentai. <laughs> That's it. I <laughs> love new, new I, podcast on the main. <laughs> I love teaching. I love teaching people. But um, yeah. So that's some of the stuff I'm Ross. I'm um, watching. I'm trying to keep up with mm. like G1. I I was catching um, Ring of Honor. I respect those guys are so talented, but they just uh, I feel that they're they're susceptible to getting injured a lot easier because of the level of difficulty they do. So, um, and then any guys coming up, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't pay much. Whatever Shima tells me, <laughs> that's it. I go by Shima. I'll talk to Shima. I'll say, Shima, what, who, who am I looking out for? And he'll give me a list of guys. I'm like, I'm on it. I'm checking them out. So I go there <laughs> locally. Uh, there's a lot of great local guys. You know, yeah. I gave Jack, I busted Jackson Argos his balls, uh, uh previous, uh, show. And, but I, I, him, I, I have a, he, he works the crowd. Great. Um, his partner RC does the same thing. I wrestled a young kid in RWA, Kevin Geyser. He's not from around here. He's from maybe Louisville or something, but that kid is, he's got a lot of potential. There's a lot of guys. I mean, my suggestions to anybody that doesn't know these guys are looking for new talent, pick up these DVDs and, or whatnot and look at the guys that you don't, you're not familiar with. Watch them. Look at those guys. You're familiar with these other guys, you know, mm-hmm. watch the guys you don't know, form your own opinion. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there's a bunch out there. I don't want to, I don't want to drone on too long. <laughs> What's the uh, best and worst thing about uh, indie wrestling all these years? All these years, uh, you know what? I met a lot of good acquaintances in mm-hmm. in wrestling, but I have, I, I met some very good friends out of it. I always feel you have a lot of acquaintances, few friends in any industry you're in, uh, and that's the thing with wrestling. Learning, um, you know, the the the. the it's again very humbling to be on the road and just understand all that time you put in, mm-hmm. and to see the fans react and the, the the appreciation they have for you when you come through the curtain and you're doing your job what you're supposed to be doing. Um, to me, I love that. That's the best thing. I'm a people person. I I love it. No matter how much grief I give at RWA crowd, that's those those boos are cheers to me. I'm doing mm-hmm. my job. Uh, the worst thing, um, crooked promoters. Guys that get in the business that are bandwagoners that sort of slid through the back door that got uh, that are backyarders. Uh, that I mean that that waters down the business. Uh, mm-hmm. Guys doing these incredible moves through all this stuff and then kicking out at two. Um, come on, that should be a finish. Come on, guys. I don't care if you're getting signed. Congratulations, you're getting signed. But you should really think about the guys that are behind you that still have to try to keep the interest of the crowds. You know, it's not going to work if mm-hmm. you're taking a superplex off a two-story building through a school bus and you kick out at two. Thanks. The windows blew out of that bus, but you still kicked out at two. That's that's fantastic. 
Thank you. I know you're getting signed, but now what in the shit am I going to have to do <laughs> for them to believe this standard pile driver in the middle of a ring is actually a finish? I don't know what to do. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Shoot my head off with a fucking gun. I don't know what else you do. I think you'd kick out a two at that one. I, I would still kick out a two. <laughs> kick out It'd a be two like when you cut a rattle. Yeah. When you cut a rattle, uh, rattlesnake's head off and the body's still moving, <laughs> I'm just still going to kick. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck it. You I don't, tell it's getting late in this I'm one. I'm late as shit. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I don't want to drone on like I said. <laughs> welcome welcome to Cranky Hentai's podcast. Coming soon to Mayhem. <laughs> Let's see if we can keep him up any later and see how much he swears. There Damn. you go. Fuck it. Oh, jeez. Uh, super hentai. <laughs> it is a pleasure as always. We're going to have to get you back in here Thank you. way sooner than the six years I think it took us to get you back here <laughs> yes. in the first place. <laughs> yes. I would like that. I would like You always it. seem to have a belt every time you're in, too. So, <laughs> And I do. And I have a cruiserweight, RWA cruiserweight champion right here. Just right yeah, now, the yeah. belt's getting, uh, getting some touch-ups done to it. That's the only yeah, reason I don't yeah. have it on me. So there you go. Some great stuff happening there. Check out, of course, rwa.live.com uh, if you want to see what's going on with that promotion that you're a part of. And what was the other one up in Cleveland again? It's Maximum Assault Wrestling. There you go. Yeah, look, M-A-W. Look that up. I know J-Rock's a part of that. Yes. Um, I've been hearing good things and interesting things. Like, hey, there's this new thing, and, and it seems to be kind of interesting. So um, always you can see good. Uh, and that was a, uh, and I think that's an area that it kind of went down to AIW, but there's now there's new stuff popping up. So there's, there's a lot of variety coming yeah. up. Yeah. In the Cleveland area too, so. right? A lot of promotions up there are gaining traction. Good, you know, not just good. one or two. They're it's a good wrestling there. town. It's a great, it is. great wrestling town up there. It is. I so. love, I love it up there. So I remember we've we've had a blast from the you know, AIW shows we've been to to you know work with Joe on the old uh, uh, Prime Wrestling, which I, yeah. I think you may have been a part of. Yeah, that I was too, a part of that. Moment. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, good stuff up there, not just the Pittsburgh crowd. So, thank you so much. Check them out on the social media, and those are again. Uh, I can be found on Instagram at masked underscore aggression uh facebook you have to look up crom c-r-o-m gordon as in flash gordon for my facebook and um twitter i never visit the damn thing it's super hentai too though super hentai too <laughs> you just made a friend yeah out the window. now yeah. you're talking kid. look at him what the hell what the hell man beach is getting weird man yeah <laughs> <laughs> Why let me look at V for approval? I'm like, no, nah, it's all right, man. <laughs> like, the guys, just walking by. There's a window here. If you guys don't know uh, our setup, and literally, people are just walking from the train to their homes, probably after a long day of school or work, and they see this guy point at them. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Super Anti. Thank you, to Matt Carlin, for joining us, Mainstream Matt One T on the Twitter. Always a pleasure. Check him out on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And if you haven't yet, it's a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he, Super Hentai joined us for the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And it was... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Until then, please support Indie Wrestling. <laughs> this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.